Welcome to Lab 122, which is our research laboratory. Unfortunately, you can't be in the research laboratory. That's why we are doing a demonstration for you today. But I'll try to uh, make it as clear as possible. And Al is taking the video, so she'll zoom in on different parts throughout my illustration. So what you will be doing actually in the lab, you will be preparing your samples in the teaching lab and Fran, your TA, will be running them on the HPLC for you and giving you the data. So today what I'm going to do is actually show you the parts of the HPLC, show, show you how we do manual injection versus auto injection, and then show you how the chromatogram and how we integrate the data. Okay, so first of all, I want to walk you through the different parts of the HPLC. So basically, like we talk in lecture, we have the mobile phases and a pump. Sometimes you have one pump, sometimes you have two pumps. So I'll be talking to Fan here, pretending that she's a student, and Ali will be um, recording. So we have, like I said, one pump and two solvents, or two pumps and two solvents. Sometimes we have three solvents, sometimes we have four solvents. But when you, we want to run a gradient illusion, like today, that means we're gonna change the concentration of the mobile phase over time, we're gonna need more than one uh, solvent. The pump is going to pump them into the system. And then when they go into the system, the first compartment is the sample injection. So that's where we have our sample prepared, like you will be preparing it in the lab, and then we will inject it either manually or using the auto injector, which I'll show you in a minute. Then it goes from the injector to the guard column, and I'll show you the guard column in a minute and what we do, why do we have a guard column. Then the HPLC column, and from there, your sample is going to go through the column and separate based on its affinity to the stationary phase and then leaves the column one component at a time, hopefully if we achieve separation, and then goes to the detector to get detected. There are different types of detectors. We'll talk about them in the class. The one detector that we will be working with is UV detector, and we have a particularly something called photodiode error detector. And the photodiode error detector is very unique, and it has very specific ability that we will talk about today compared to regular UV detectors. And then from the detector, it will give you a signal. As the sample goes through, every component is going to give you a signal, and then you'll have chromatographic peak, and we're going to integrate those chromatographic peaks. After leaving the detector, it will be going into the waste, and, or if we need to collect the sample for further analysis, it will uh, we will collect it in a tube and it goes for different types of analysis. Today you are going to separate caffeine and detect it and quantitate it. So what you did in the lab is you prepare, or what you're going to do in the lab is you're going to prepare different beverages and then you're going to uh, separate the components of the extracts using this column and then you're going to detect caffeine and quantitate caffeine. Now this column here is a C18 column. So what that means, I'll explain in lecture if we haven't gotten to that part yet, is that you have uh, silica bonded to 16 carbons in a chain. That means, that's what we call it C18, sorry, 18 carbons in a chain. So that makes it hydrophobic. That makes the stationary phase hydrophobic. So when the silica is derivatized with C18, then the column or the stationary phase becomes hydrophobic. So we have a hydrophobic stationary phase, and then we're going to be starting with a very polar solvent. So we're going to be starting with 0.1% acetic acid solution, which is water with a little bit of acid, because that's the specification for the column that you have a certain pH. So we start with uh, water, actually this is water. So 0.1% acidic, acidic acid in water is your solvent that we're starting with, with a very, very small concentration of solvent B, which is acetonitrile, also with acetic acid to, to get to the pH that is desired. So if we close up here, Ali, 
you will see that we're starting with 0.99 ml per minute water and 0.01 milliliters per minute acetonitra. So that's 99% acetonitra uh, water to 1% acetonitra. So this makes the starting mobile phase polar. So if we have a non-polar stationary phase and a polar starting mobile phase, this makes this mode of separation or mode of chromatography separation what? Another thing that I want to point out to is the guard column right here. So this guard column from the name is guarding the column. So when we prepare our sample, there might be impurities in the samples or the extracts that we are preparing to inject on the column. So these extracts, we filter them with 0.45 uh, micrometer filter. However, there could still be impurities that interact very, very strongly with the column. And then if there is no guard column, they will go on the column and they block the column. So when your sample goes in, it won't have, uh, the functional groups will be not available for their sample or components to interact with the column. So we need to protect that column from being contaminated and blocked, the stationary phase from being blocked. So the guard column is made up of the same material in your column. So it's made up of C18 as well. So what happens is when you inject your sample and it goes onto the guard column, the guard column is going to absorb the impurities. And the rest of the sample is going to go on the column and get separated and protects the column. So the guard column usually is kind of replaced over time, like every three months potentially, if you're using it a lot, you would want to put a new guard column, otherwise it'll be saturated and the impurities will start going onto your column. And also you will start having high pressure on your system, which you don't want that, because it would damage the column. So in HPLC, which you will learn is different than GC, the column in HPLC is made from stainless steel and it is packed at high pressure. If we drop it, it the, the stationary phase will break and then we have to throw away an $800 to $2,000 uh, column. So you don't want to drop my column, please. So then the other thing, the difference with the GC is the column you'll see is very different. The capillary column is very, very long. They don't use guard column, why? Because actually in JC, after injecting several samples, they cut the column. So they cut the front of the column because the front of the column would be more contaminated with impurities. But you can't cut my column. Uh, yeah, that is not possible. And I don't accept doing that. Okay, so, uh, so that's that. Now I'm gonna walk you through the different components of the HPLC, which we haven't gotten to that in class yet, but we will. So the first important thing you want to know is you have your solvents that needs to go into the pumps. Each solvent, ha in this case, have its own pump. So here, the mixing of the two solvents happen after high pressure pumping. So these are high pressure pumps. Each is pumping at a specific rate and concentration. And then after both are being pumped into the system, they need to be mixed together. So in order to be mixed, we have here a mixer, a compartment where each mobile phase go in. And then there are channels in there where they're going to meet and get mixed together very well. So you have a very consistent mobile phase. If the mixer doesn't work well, you have a very inconsistent baseline. So it has to be mixed really well. And then it goes, the, the mobile phase after being mixed really well, goes into the injection port. So you'll see that in action in a minute. So we have, this is an auto sampler. So we have our samples. There was a sample here. Okay. <laughs> So we have, in this case, we have our T sample. We put it here, and then you will have the rest of your samples with your four replications. 
and then we have our standards. So basically we can fill 50 samples, program the unit, and then we have auto injection and it just goes into sequence and collects the data. So in HPLC, you really, if you have an automated system, you just program it, leave, and come back and get the data. So you will see that in a minute where the needle comes to the front. So you have the needle, it comes to the front, and then goes in, the, in this compartment to do rinsing. So the first thing, the, the needle needs to be rinsed really well from previous injections, so you don't have any contamination. So the needle is gonna come in and get the rinsing going.